Our money personality is shaped in many ways. One of those is how we grew up. So your childhood classroom shapes a lot of why you handle money the way you do today, but also our money tendencies. So think, are you a spender or are you a saver? Do you like to spend money on experiences or things? All of this shapes our money personality. And then you go a step further and you add relationships to the mix. So whether you're married, maybe if you have grown children or your parents or your friends, and when you're in relationship with people, you realize, wow, we are so different. And that can cause a lot of conflict, but you also can work together and appreciating and empathizing with other people's money personalities. So we have Angel and Bobby. Rachel is helping out a couple of our viewers. Hi. Hello, Hello. friend. Hey. Can you first just set up how big of an issue this is in your life? <laughs> Finances have definitely been a point of contention with Bobby and I at times. Um, anywhere from little tiny disagreements to great big blow up fights, not speaking about things for days. I'm a person that struggles to spend money, especially larger sums of money. It's totally overwhelming for me. Yes, and here's, here's something that happened to us. It was quite funny. We went to the deal, a dealership, oh, wow. and <laughs> I'm gonna embarrass her a little bit. We went to a dealership and she was buying a new car. We sat down, did the paperwork, and she started crying. <laughs> Oh, the, the salesman gave her tissues and said, we don't have to do this deal. But she ended up did buying the car. And I, me personally, when I buy a vehicle, I just bought a new truck. I uh, signed the paperwork just as fast as I could. Never shed a tear. Right. That doesn't well, scare me to spend money. Mind you, I was at home terrified in having mental fits because I knew he was out buying a truck. Right. Well, number one, opposites attract. So you guys being opposite in the marriage is very normal. That is like me and my husband as well. So when you look at these tendencies, so I think it's really interesting. <laughs> yes, very much so. So when you look at the tendency of scarcity versus abundance, this is a good one. So think about the pandemic and the toilet paper shortage. Were you one that kind of leaned to, oh yeah, I'll share if I have extra, it's fine, no big deal, we can get more later. Or were you the one that was like, oh no, we need to stack up, we need to buy extra. And so that's a classic example of scarcity versus abundance. And so, I, Angel, I think you lean a little bit more on the scarcity side, I saw from your results. So when you're scarcity minded, what you do is you just realize that things are limited, things are finite, opportunity, money, options. And so that can lead you to make some poor financial decisions because you're not willing to risk. And mm. fear takes over and fear is a terrible financial advisor. But a good thing about scarcity mindset is you tend to be a saver. So saving comes naturally for you, which is great. Now, Bobby, you're more abundance mindset. So the glass, the glass is half full. There's always opportunity, more money to get. It's going to be okay. And the great thing is right. you enjoy life. You enjoy life. And you make some, you take some risks with money. And that really can pay off. I do. But the con is you have to watch out to make sure that you're actually caring about the outcome. Because a lot of abundant, abundance-minded people say, well, I'll just make another decision if I don't like that one. So just be careful with that. So... Angel, I would say you need an emergency fund. This is gonna make you feel yes. secure. So start out with $1,000. I want you to pay off all your consumer debt and then bump that up to three to six months of expenses. This is gonna give you a really solid financial foundation to breathe and as a scarcity mindset person, to allow you to have some fun because you know the basics are taken care of. Now, Bobby, I would say to you, have a dollar <laughs> amount that you are not willing to spend unless you consult Angel and you guys together Aww. agree on the purchase. And then I would say practice <laughs> delayed <laughs> gratification too. <laughs> and then lastly, I would say I Bobby, anything, practice, <laughs> practice delayed gratification because abundance minded people tend to make really quick decisions. So give yourself 24 hours before a big purchase. Okay, sounds good. I mean, I, I loved I all of that. that. I thought it was mesmerizing, but it doesn't matter what I think of it. What do you guys think of it? I think Bobby had a hard pill to swallow on that last one. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I but will you guys... say that when she mentioned the emergency fund, immediately I know that that would make me feel so much oh, better right? and allow me to enjoy some of the things that this one wants me to enjoy, but I panic and I worry more about the money than look, looking forward to enjoying what the money would get us. And I have to say, Rach, what a great job you did. Uh, thank you, Rachel Cruz. Know yourself, know your money. Good job.